family, friends, and colleagues of the Honorable Anne McKeague filled O'Shaughnessy Auditorium on the campus of St. Catherine University to bear witness to an historic moment in the history of Minnesota, the swearing-in of the first Native American jurist on the state's highest court. As a young girl from northern Minnesota, Judge McKeague aspired to become a lawyer. Well, I was going to be a dentist, and I had to do a report on dentistry, and there was a lot of science, and I knew that I did not like science, and I was not good at science, and I think I decided that I was good at arguing and also liked helping people. I think that comes from my parents, and for some reason, I, don't, I can't really understand why, because I didn't know any lawyers. Um, I don't know if it was Hill Street Blues that was probably on TV at the time, but I just decided I'm going to be a lawyer. And I think it was probably destined from the day I was born that I was going to go to St. Catharines University where my mother attended. I was the only girl. And so that was the plan and I never changed that plan. I think I was lucky. I had the best of both worlds. I had a mother who was a Fulbright scholar and valued education and saw the importance of that saw the importance of her role within the community. You know, she certainly could have done a million other things in her lifetime. She was from Bemidji, and she chose to move back home for the welfare of her kids to raise them in a small town uh, and give up her dreams and aspirations, which were much bigger than that. And then my dad, who was born in Onagam and who hated the Twin Cities and hated traffic and just couldn't function down here, and so he was home when he went, you know, back to Federal Dam. But he valued, you know, if you can't get your hands dirty and you can't do physical labor, then education means nothing. So you take those two things together, and I couldn't have been luckier in knowing that you gotta be part of the community, what can you do to help the community, but also don't be afraid to get your hands dirty, because a good day's work is good for everybody. After receiving her law degree from Hamlin University, Judge McKeague's first law job was with the Hennepin County Attorney's Office in the Child Protection Division, specializing in Indian child welfare cases. Mike Freeman hired me in 1992, and I was placed as a law clerk in the Child Protection Division, and it was as though I landed home and I stayed there until I left in 2008. I knew I wanted to be a mother, I knew I wanted to have a lot of children, and so when I could have an impact on kids in a positive way, I think that's probably what was most um, rewarding about that job, but then I was fortunate enough, uh, Mike Freeman approached me in, I wanna say in the later 90s, if I wanted to work on improving the office's work with the tribes, and specifically on the Indian child welfare cases. And that was something that really interested me because of course it was gonna bring me home and it was gonna allow me to do work within my community. And so I, I along with another county attorney, Mernie Haney at the time, he allowed us to travel throughout the state of Minnesota as well as the Dakotas and meet with all of the reservations with which we had children in common. Hennepin was like the third largest urban Indian population at the time, and we had a very large number of those cases. And to really start a discussion and to listen about what we could do different as a government agency and involving the tribes in those um, proceedings. For example, I can recall going out to um, Rosebud and Pine, Rib Pine Ridge in particular, and the Rosebud rep said, you are the first county attorney that has ever come to our reservation in all of the years that we've been doing child welfare cases from anywhere. And how sad is that with a law that was passed in 1978 and this is the late 90s. And so that really told me how important this was. With her appointment to the state Supreme Court by Governor Mark Dayton, Judge McKeague reflects on a special person who influenced her throughout her legal career and she in turn offers advice to the younger generation. I had gone in 1995 to, there was a swearing in of Robert Blazer. And I had heard about this guy who was a White Earth member. I am from White Earth. 
um, even though I grew up in Federal Dam. And watching him be sworn in, I think instilled in me, okay, if this guy can do it from the White Earth Reservation, then maybe I could too. And he really took me under his wing and mentored me. He was a very big inspiration. I tell my kids and I tell the law clerks and um, the students that I teach, I said, never say no to yourself. Make somebody say no to you, meaning that you can do whatever it is that you want to do. I mean, I am a perfect example of that. I grew up in a town of 100 people. I wasn't exposed to, there wasn't any lawyers like that I knew of in town that were around me. But still, a dream was born and I followed that dream and it was every door is open to me until somebody closes it and even if they close it I'm going to keep going to try to open it and that's I think you have to have that sort of ambition and belief in yourself and seek out the mentorship of others because I now view that I have a responsibility to pass on what I have learned and what I have gained from Judge Blazer, as well as other people who have mentored me. And I think it's really important to seek that out as a young person and have others help you find your way because it's too big to do by yourself.